That's probably how you jungle. That's why you don't think it's very good. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LCS Countdown Saturday edition, where for 30 minutes we flex our knowledge on League's newest champion and sell you on some off-season changes until the timer way over there reaches zero and we jump into champion select. It's, it's, it's a bargain, <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, right there. It's, it's, there it is, the I timer. remember my first time on the desk. It's taken me some time to get acclimated. It's, it, you know, I'm taller than the normal host. But before we get started, let's take a look at how the teams stand after week one. It's Dignitas, FlyQuest, and Cloud9 coming out on top of week one unscathed. 100 Thieves, Evil Geniuses, and Immortals, as well as Team Liquid, all went one to one, leaving the rest of the squads sadly tied for last. Now, given one week of play, I want to test the tea leaves and crystal balls with some over-unders, and so I'm going to ask my esteemed analysts and probably Cloud9, are they going to be better or worse than 1.5th place? 1.5, the classic place we all aim for. <laughs> um, I'm going to say they're finishing second, and that's my prediction, so I would say under. Yeah, I feel like this placement of the over-under is a little bit too easy because it's literally, are they first place? Yes. Or any of the other places? <laughs> I'm just going to take any of the other places. The odds are too good. I assume the odds also <laughs> reflect that it's one spot versus nine, so hopefully it doesn't pay out 50-50. I'm saying the over. I think based off what I saw in Steve's tweet that came out uh, two days ago, Steve Aaron said, Liquid 112, yeah. it did not sound like Brox was close to coming. It would sound like a very frustrated owner who can't get his star jungler to appear, and we're uh -huh. going to see Sharon fire for a little bit. I'm not super convinced that that will be enough to uh, take first place from a Cloud9 who looks like right. they're jiving right now. And keep in mind, it's regular season, not like eventual spring split playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's only regular like, season. Yeah, regular they were game season. One okay. up already. You got a couple more weeks of a better lineup. Maybe TL never catches it, even if they are the better team overall. Next question, though. TSM jungler, <laughs> <laughs> 1.5. Okay. okay, there we go. Well, uh, like a transition. I was like, let's just say the line. 1.5 yeah, junglers. 1.5 again. The TSM. Over or under 1.5 junglers is split. I mean, all right. So I'm going to say Darduck has not had the longest stay on his previous teams. Um, TSM, doesn't have a great... TSM also doesn't have a good track record yeah, with no. keeping junglers. Uh, but I do have faith in this. I think Darduck is here to stay for this spring split, at least, right? So you're saying under? They're staying at one jungler. Saying yeah. one jungler. All right, Mark. I'm taking the under as well. I think they. This is like an all-in plan. I think they're done, kind of with the rotating roster stuff as well. Wait, as did it not work or something? I don't think so. No. <laughs> Didn't seem like it. Uh, just and, making sure. Yeah, I think also based off what we've seen, the team's issues are right now. It just seems like getting on the same page and knowing how they want to close out games. Not like I don't see this becoming a blow-up interpersonal problem. This is an easy answer. Easy answer. Who else are they gonna get mid-split? They're not changing not junglers. Okay? And uh, from a, uh, they're EG not Academy. Yeah. They're not changing junglers. I gotta say, this is gonna be under. It is uh, one jungler for TSM, and it's Dardock it's for the Dardock, whole split. It's Dardock the whole split. All right, we'll see how it goes. Final question for all of you. Counterlogic Gaming, eight and a half wins over or under. They're 0-2 right now with 16 to play. And I, usually that would be playoffs or not, right? Like eight is the line. Usually yeah. it's, it's, yeah. you often miss it if you get eight. So I'm going to say under. I actually have such little faith in CLG after the week one showing and seeing some of the other teams who I didn't think would be as good also look strong. It was kind of both those things coming for me that makes me think they won't be able to get above eight wins. They, to me, okay, had a really, really <laughs> terrible <laughs> game and a terrible opening look. Uh, but Maybe because it was so terrible. It's just I'm week like, one. It's two it, games. It yeah, can't but, be that bad. But Dig actually <laughs> look good. FlyQuest actually look good. Like other teams can look good. Look, week look, one. Yeah, That's true. But 8.5 wins is not a lot. That, yeah. You, yeah. I'd, so the I'd, bar isn't I mean, that high that you're I mean, saying they can't get over it's here. It's going Mark. eight and eight, or going eight and eight from here would be under. Going 50-50 from here would be under, yeah. right? So yeah. you're saying yeah. they're gonna go above 50-50 yeah. from weeks two onwards. We'll see if that happens. Next section, with Rise of the Elements, we saw plenty of changes to the Rift, but one role in particular saw, and we'll continue to see some pretty dramatic shifts to play style. So to guide us through the jungle, Kobe, walk on behind me. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you while you're talking you know, there, my friend. I appreciate that. Give us a little breakdown. So jungle has had a lot of changes, and people have been complaining a whole bunch on social media, in-game. I'm not here to say whether the complaints are right or wrong. Uh, jungle, jungle has definitely been in a rough spot. What I am here to try and teach you is some of my experiences over 10 years of jungling, um, some tips here to evaluate jungle changes so that you can remain efficient when you're judging how to play. Um, 
because this is, this is what Jungle is all about. It's about time efficiency. So uh, what I did is, these are the new experience values for the camps. And I went in a game as just to get a baseline value of how long it takes to take one of these objectives. Went in as a level one Rek'Sai with just Q and Machete. Um, now, keep in mind that the time that it takes to clear these camps changes based on your champion, on your level, whether you start Machete, Talisman, have AoE, those sorts of things. But this is just to give you a baseline on how to judge how uh, valuable each objective you're going for is, because that's what jungle is all about. It's about efficiency. So right off the bat, you can see that Krugs should have gone down in your power ranking of objectives to do as a jungler. Gromp should have gone way up because they took experience out of Krugs and into Gromp. They didn't change how hard it was to kill those camps at all. So your time investment is gonna remain the same no matter what champion you were using previously. And you have to judge those values versus the other things that you can do as a jungler. Junglers are always pulled to so many directions. There's Rift Herald, there's Dragon, there's Warding, ganking, counter ganking. Just one uh, objective I've got here for you is lane experience. Now, this number is just three melees, three ranged, and a third of a cannon. That's gonna be uh, the same for the first 15 minutes of the game. So that's usually where you're judging a lot of your jungle pathing. This goes to show how big of an objective for junglers helping your lanes is compared to doing your own jungle camps in the current state of the game. If you can go gank a lane, you burn summoner spells, even if you don't get the kill, if you can get lane priority and your uh, laner is able to get an entire minion wave, that's a, that's a bigger reward than doing one of your camps. And so you have to constantly be judging this time investment that you're putting into things like this. Now, as we move forward, there are more changes coming to the jungle. So you constantly have to reevaluate uh, your priorities. Upcoming, they've already released a little bit of uh, spoilers for the uh, uh, patch that's coming next. They're upping some of the flat experience that is on the camps. So keep your eyes on junglers like Karthus that will power farm and can actually take advantage of the shorter respawn timer of these camps because they are gonna get more value in them with again, not changing how difficult it is to actually take them. Uh, and you're gonna have to constantly reevaluate re your priorities and remain flexible. That is gonna do it for us. We're gonna take a quick break. And as we return, there'll be more LCS countdown.
Welcome back to LCS Countdown, where we're gearing up for 100 Thieves versus Counter Logic Gaming. And a new contender has entered the ring. And while he can be seen as a relatively straightforward champion, there's more to that beefy brawler Kobe than meets the eye. <laughs> Set. I saw you flex it. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about Seth, though. I think I like this champion because he's really easy to pick up. He looks like you. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah uh, Honestly, anyway. though, uh, I mean, people have talked about this champion a lot. It's been out for a while, so I'm sure everybody already knows the kit. Um, I would like to highlight some special things that I think that people overlook when they're examining this champion because at first glance it is very simple to play. Some things, on top of really good tanky base stats, he also has a second part to the passive where you gain more health regeneration the lower you are every 5% and that contributes a lot to helping people out when you're laning uh, and you're a bad laner like Freak yep. Yep. Or, yep. <laughs> or you're taking a lot of damage in the jungle, you can stick around. You heal back up extremely quickly and especially at key moments when you are really low because of the increase the lower that you are, that combined with a surprise shield on the W with a very low cooldown can lead to a lot of surprise kills for people I've seen getting really upset with Set, like, oh, he's OP. Well, it just, I feel like you're not reading the champion and you're not understanding yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what the champion okay. does, and a lot of people are getting baited into kills. I mean, I think that's a bigger part for the people playing against Set than playing as, is watch out with his W cooldown, try and track it. It does get pretty low, so it can be hard, but as you get it closer to killing him, he takes more damage, that grip bar sets building up, you're going to see a big shield, so be ready for that. Probably, are we going to yeah. see something this weekend? No, we're, no, we are... Definitely going to be seeing <laughs> Seth. Yes, we, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, what I, yeah, happy I meant to say yeah. the yes part, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, when it was being shown in LEC, I definitely thought when this champion came out, this is going to be a problem for a while. I think as time goes on, people are going to learn how to play against it. It's not going to be a big problem. But right now, all the things you just said, all the hidden power in the champion, I think that's going to disrupt pro play for sure. Down the line, everyone agree? Uh, I, I think he's definitely going to be played. I like um, looking at the enemy composition before you choose him, though. Uh, oftentimes people uh, talk about not wanting to blind pick for your lane matchup, but also for the team comp. If you're looking down a lot of stuff that's going to kite you, that is the biggest thing that Seth has to worry about. So you want to see some sort of tank or front line on the enemy team that you can ult into the back line and create that big AOE that you're looking for. Listen, we have some smart analysts on this desk. I love them, and they're totally right with everything they just said, but they're forgetting one thing. We're in North America. We're so bad about picking up new champions, especially top laners, Aatrox, no one played that during Rift Rivals. We got obliterated by it. We have Pantheon. Like Pantheon is so high priority week one around the world. We have one. One out of ten games, it was picked or banned. That was like for a few days we, with Aatrox. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be a few days with Set, Kobe. Also, Set is the simplest champion yes. that we have released. It's so simple. It's so right. simple. Right. It's it's so simple. Hey, listen, 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 listen. listen. Hey, gentlemen. All right. You guys clearly have some words that you need to settle. You want to you just, you just hash yeah. it out in the Rift? Let's yeah, go. I'll beat you. <laughs> All right, I'll stomp you out, Joey. Set 1v1. Set 1v1. Um, so this is where I say get ready. <laughs> get oh, set. Oh, no. Yikes. Yikes. Oh, so they're Go. actually... So set is very simple, but there is one cool thing. Mark, do you want to resume? Yeah, sure. There is one cool thing that you can actually do with set to try and surprise uh, your enemies. And this is this is the only surprise thing that I, that I have actually been able to pull off, and that is W, but then flashing. To oh move no! It. Because you can actually flash to move the, the big payload. All right, great. Now that you've burned your flash, let's fight. Wait, burn yours, <laughs> no, Mark. It's not no, fair. No, come over here. Okay. <laughs> oh! I'm gonna all you, baby. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, where's the some minions? I need minions to stun you. <laughs> oh. I, I got the cannon! Wow. We're not I'm going for the cannon! Scam, clearly. <laughs> hey! It's this, so easy to this, sidestep. Wow. No one's gonna play him. They're doing so Whoa. much damage. I'm gonna get my stun! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> no. My health regen I, I is pretty good, I think we can good, kill Mark. each other. Mark, how's your health regen going? Uh, I'm winning, I think. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, come out. All right, Boom! Right. Use your so, turn. Boom! Um, <laughs> boom! You know, a whole bunch of changes happened in the last few months. Uh, you know, it might be hard to keep up with you everything that's happened. Ah, season, nice but try, buddy. If you, wanna, if you wanna come join me, you know, uh, new teams, new champions, new stuff happen. Uh, we're ready to provide some LCS sellouts. Come here. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Freak.
What you got for me today? Today we are selling a membership card to the FlyQuest fandom. It is the perfect time to buy. They've just finished rebranding. They did keep the beautiful emerald and gold logo that they've had for a long time now, but their jerseys are embroidered with roses to evoke their Go Green initiative. And in a league full of evil and people trying to get the leg up on each other, just go for the likable guys who have the right morality. The right morality. Now, mm -hmm. is this a good year-round investment? Uh, it's really best to get in now. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. The flowers would be a great gift for a significant other. It's really not gonna last. Flowers wilt, you know, so get in while the getting's good. You know, fair point. Stock, limited, running fast. Get your orders in. Hey, Kobe, how's it going? Hey, Freak. Jungle Change has got you down. I'm in a little bit. I know there's a lot of pros to choose from in the North American LCS, but could I interest you in a Team Liquid Roxa? Now, he smites, yep. he ganks, he smashes. It's only available for pre-order right now, but if you put money down, I will throw in a free Shurnfire. A free Shurnfire? For a few weeks. Okay, is that worth it though, the free Shurnfire? Guaranteed to get you a win over TSM at the very least. You know, Kobe, that is a great idea. Brox and Shurnfire, two for one deal. Call us up, maybe buy some stock. Hey, Jat, how you doing? Hi, Freak. Are you tired of hearing people complain about gold and experience loss in the jungle? You know, I am a bit. I have just the thing for you then. It's Ivor, because gold and experience doesn't really matter that much on this champion. That's a good idea. Yeah, all you have to do is build support items, you press E, you press R on the opponent. You don't have to carry, because Ivor just gets carried. Wow, is there a catch? I mean, the only catch is some people would say it's not fun, but I have a question for you. Do you have fun winning? I do have fun winning. Then yeah. Ivern's for you. Ivern's for all of us. Let up those phones. Call now. Welcome back to LCS Countdown, where game one is just moments away from kicking off. And that first matchup is a clash between Counterlogic Gaming and 100 Thieves. Thank you, Kobe. <laughs> Dig the Toss, of course, looking to keep their streak alive versus Team Liquid after that. And then two more LCS matches before we close things out with Cloud9 Academy versus Immortals Academy. So CLG versus 100 Thieves, game one. We've got two teams looking to improve on their week one performances. 
500. These is all about cleaning up that rough early game that plagued their season start. Yeah, in particular, Meteos had borne the brunt of a lot of the problems in the early game, especially the first game. Not really specifically his fault, just hard targeted uh, with some early invades, but that did set them behind a lot, and that obviously has spillover effects on, on laners uh, who can't play as aggressively because they're junglers underleveled, stuff like that. So they had a really rough start in, in both their games, and I'm hoping that they can kind of fix that. Yeah, I am a little bit worried about uh, Huntedee's mid as well uh, for Ryoma. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure how their mid jungle synergy is going to work out for some of the tougher competition. That's the thing, though, is most of the competition in the LCS midlands has gotten pretty tough. You know, Crown's really good. Uh, he also has to play Niski this week. Bjergsen, yep. PoE, there's just tons of great mid laners well, in the league. We've got a great analyst here, probably. Yeah, Speaking huh. of someone who every mid laner is better than you on stage, how do That's you go absolutely around not that? not true. Well, I think all these mid laners took a lot of inspiration from watching me play. So I'm really, <laughs> no I'm really happy about that. Well, it was the style and heart I had. Oh, okay, okay. Because um, we all know heart's the most important in a competitive game. And yeah, I think mid lane in A has been growing a lot. Um, Maybe not necessarily NA talent growing in mid lane, but I think overall the skill level of mid has been going up in NA. And I think, yeah, Roma trying to make a statement is going to be pretty hard to find his footing amongst I know, the top five NA mids are pretty strong right now. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, on the CLG side, they've come out of the offseason. Um, they were focusing on team communication, uh, but so far with week one, we have not seen team communication be the strong point. Uh, let's, let's not overreact, guys. All right, let's not overreact <laughs> for re week one. I overreacted a, already a, in the over A couple of uh, the moments in uh, the CLG's first week were not great. I think communication broke down a bit. I think some of the plays were not quite on the same page of being aggressive. So I think it'll get better though. Yeah, it's actually very clear when you look at the game, the coordination is just not there. So you don't have to be in team comms um, to see some of the mistakes here. Like, I don't know what happened here, but quickly <laughs> yes. flashes into this play. Maybe Ruin was calling, hey, I'm on the way for that game, but they, they misjudged the timing completely. Um, and then they had a uh, composition that had a lot of engage, but very frequently they would have Smoothie on Leona going in and the rest of the team either not in place to deal damage behind the engage or actually going the opposite direction. Um, Right, and that, that's such a huge concern considering they were hyping up when a couple of people went there like J uh, Dash and, and Kobe about like how important this was going to be that Smoothie's coming in, he talks a lot, we had a relatively quiet team, this will be great for our communication. He tried to sell us on that and we saw the complete opposite in their first games. On the very beginning of the clip though, the first play, when they roam up from bottom lane and everybody's flashing in, they get the mm -hmm. first blood, like that's what people expected, you know, they're on the same page, they're all, you know, going for the kill, but that broke down. So I think to your point earlier about whether they're going to do well, we have to see which path they take. Was it the early game or was it the later game stages? What are you thinking, Prawley? I mean, I highly disagree. Uh, I think the things you guys are highlighting are a lot more positive than what is actually happening. I think those flash in plays show that the team can actually be making plays on the rift. And I think kind of coaching aggression in is pretty hard to do, but if they can do that already on their first stage game, it's just got to get better. And if it doesn't, I'll eat my words. But for now, it's got to get better. The week one was just an offshoot. Of right. So you like fights, as, I even like if fights. you're losing all yeah. the fights. Yes. And let me redirect you, right? <laughs> I like, actually, I'm fine with that. Because we're, we're going to break down this match, right? So, so OK, CLG is not as bad as you think. Yes. Um, uh, how does CLG win? All right, so this is not a faith call, by the way. I think it's a very logical approach. Um, Coffee and Red Bull have caffeine. Caffeine okay. is a stimulant, and it can get your player awake. Now, Crown, big wow. star on this team, big star, was a little jet lagged. I'll say he played at like 5 a.m. his time outside. So let's give him some caffeine, pump him up a bit, and then I gotta say, I like those team fights. I like the start of them. Now we just need to bring them together, coordinate them, hit at the same time, same target and get on the same page. I like how Coach probably just jacks his players up with Red Bulls. There See, yeah, go. get in there, The boy. secret right. tactic of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. Mark, what's, what's the counter? I mean, he's obviously great and How's very intelligent. Thieves uh, 100 Thieves, though, I think they need to find a power pick for someday and a counter pick for Ryoma. I think they're on red side, and usually when I see... Uh, counter picks. I want that person to be the one making a lot of the plays in the game. I'm not sure what Ryoma has up his sleeve, and there are a number of top laners right now who can be very powerful when you're talking about things like a Pantheon potentially, 
maybe the set, if it's in the right spot, you don't need to pick it right away, but he'll be the one needing to pick blind and make sure it's a champ you can carry on. Have a better early game as well, hopefully from Meteos and the team to play around someday, because I am scared about the mid lane. If Crown has had his Wheaties and his <laughs> Red Bulls, <laughs> Wheaties he's, he's woken answer. up. Yeah, Mark, I can't get by your first line being counterpick for Ryoma and counterpick for someday. It was power pick. No, power power pick. pick. Oh, I take it All back. Right. Good idea. Yeah. So, so ahead of today's clashes, I want you know who listens to analysts. I want to hear your predictions. I want to hear your predictions for the day. We've got a lot of answers Ooh. in here. Probably Kobe and Mark's predictions on the screen. We've got one difference. That's Mark, it? you think mm. Dignitas is gonna beat Team Liquid? Sell me on it. Jat sold me on it. I don't remember what he said, but it sounded great <laughs> in the green room. And I was yes. like, you know what? You're right. Uh, it was mostly, I think, due to the fact that they have a pretty solid bot lane that can withstand uh, Team Liquid if their jungler isn't being able to play around them quite to the level that we saw out of Smithy in previous splits. Uh, I don't think Sharon Fire is quite that player. And so if their bot lane can hold on to that, I do like their solo laners a lot right now for Dignitas. Uh, for me, the, if the bot lane holds on is a, is a big if, right? Sure. Uh, so even it's though too. Double If and Core JJ didn't come out week one with as dominating as you usually expect from them, uh, I think that taking a loss for Team Liquid in week one is actually a good thing. Because my biggest worry for that team is them getting lazy, them not practicing, them only looking at international events, saying, ah, oh, it's just North America, we win always uh, yep. you know, without any competition. So delivering a loss early, gonna wake them up more than caffeine. L lose to win. would awake. <laughs> one final question, as we're gonna go to Cassius in about a minute. Uh, Crumbs did predict 100 Thieves to win the CLG match, so the three of you had CLG on it. We did win conditions, but but how how um, was there enough caffeine in crumbs when he made that prediction? I guess is the question. No, I, mean, I don't think it's all right. I don't think this is like I don't a think blowout. It's the caffeine in crumbs, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> analysts here unanimous that CLG is stronger so far. We'll see if it's even true or not. That's it for us, though. Let's send it over to Captain Flowers and Jack for game one. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I am Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, joined for the first time this season by Mr. Joshua Jat Leesman, and I hope we get some set today. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's the first time in a decade that we're going to be able to make this joke, but first cast of the decade, we won't be able to say that you, again you had until the I was, You should have saved that for a here. cast with Freak. That's... This is the first cast with you and me for the decade. Okay, fair enough. It's, it's still true. a true point. It is a true point, and we are about to hop into some 100 Thieves versus CLG, and for both of these teams, what I'm looking at is to see their first good game of the split. Yes, 100 Thieves got yep. a win in week one, but it was a comeback win that was more of a Golden Guardians throw. Yeah, and I think that 100 Thieves got one dragon last week. So sure, they got one victory, which is better than what CLG got, but neither of these teams started the way that they would hope. They're both mm -hmm. teams with playoff aspirations. We got to see 100 Thieves actually kind of having an opportunity to go 2-0. and They did have a bit of an early game edge in EG in that game, but then they just kind of got ran around the map, out macroed, unable to do anything. And for CLG, there weren't many bright spots to look at, but you're right. kind of trying to write that one off for the crown jet lag. We'll have to see what they've been able to pull together coming in here in week two. Right, they've had a whole week to prepare. It's not like the difference between a Saturday game and a Sunday game where you only have really that night of review to try to make a couple of changes. Practice time is there. Let's see what it ends up spelling for these squads as it'll be Elise banned out by CLG and 100 Thieves, the all reliable. You can't see her in her smoke screen and you can't see her on Summoner's Rift in professional play. Akali banned out. Yeah, that's gonna be one that gets continually banned until nerfs are happening. And as you can see at the top of the screen, this is patch 10.2, which is the same patch that is on the live servers right now. In week one, we played on patch 10.1. And something that always happens at the start of any pro season is it's a copycat league. The LCS, the LCK, the LPL, all of them. They're all just trying to look to see what other people are doing because that can reaffirm what you're doing works. Yep. That always becomes harder when you're on a new patch. It's the hardest at the start of the year, and it's extremely hard when new champions come out. So set is an example of that. And another thing that's throwing a curveball this week would be that Soraka top that we saw G2 actually pull out twice just this week. Soraka top can also be played as the bottom laner, not the support. So we'll see if it falls into either of those unorthodox roles here today. Cinna, Gangplank, Rumble, Tom Kench, all banned away. Kench, one of those champions that keeps things like the Aphelios and the Misfortune that are popular in the meta on AD carry alive, protects them better. And considering he's banned away, why not pick up something that's not only a mobile marksman, but one that can be flexed to solo lanes as well. Yeah, and Wushin was banned the majority of games in week one. 
as we finally do, finally, we see Set in the first game <laughs> oh, as the someday. second overall pick. With Someday, no less, one of the most fun top laners to watch in the LCS. Going to be locking in the boss here, and we'll see how he deals with his opponents. It's also Zaya picked up in first rotation here by Hunter D. Yeah, probably going to be paired with the Rakan, unless you want to actually waste a pick to take that away to go with Lucian. But the larger question here to me is how quickly CLG is going to pivot around the set pick. Because when I look at the kit, not necessarily the tuning, the question becomes, uh, is this long-term viable in pro play? I don't right. necessarily think it will be a meta pick for a long time because of the things you can pick around set, the compositions it goes into. Because it is a highly kiteable champion who is strong when you come to him. Right. So with Lucian already locked in as a potential top lane pick, how much is CLG going to put into their team, team composition that has to go into set? versus just stuff that can kite. Right, so many of the set montage clips, the pop-off moments that you see start off with three people dogpiling onto him, which yeah. is exactly where he wants his opponents to be. Aphelios locked in, Leona locked in for the bottom lane here of CLG. We'll see if 6A and Smoothie can find the damage they need there in that 2v2, up against, as you predicted, the Zion Rakan. Yeah, we've seen a lot of positional matching in the first phase of draft, a lot more than usual. A lot of times there's these desyncs, that's not the case right here. I think with Senna already being uh, a band, the Aphelios was a logical pick early on, but as you can see now, it's most likely just the mid lane and jungle that are gonna be picked next. And I'm a little surprised actually that 100 Thieves isn't trying a bit harder to pitch the jungle pool since they have first pick. Yeah, and 100 Thieves having banned the Tom Kench away, remember they had the option to pick the Aphelios as well. If they wanted to go with Zaya instead, they were fine giving the Aphelios away to CLG. LeBlanc and Diana banned out by the Thieves. Syndra banned out by CLG. So three out of three of these second phase bans focused on that mid lane. We'll see what CLG wants to go with for that fifth final. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if the rest of the compositions end up being kind of early game skirmish style champions, like a lot of the meta ended up being last year, or if we're gonna see more Victor Oriana type scaling stuff, which found a lot of success in week one, knowing that these are two teams that weren't necessarily the most apt at closing out games quickly. Jarvan is just a generic pick that's safe before they round out the composition with the mid lane. Right, pretty much any jungler that's going to make something happen at level three, one of those guys that can hit the level three point, just start ganking, start being active on the map is what you want to see. The Jarvan is locked in. Soraka, <laughs> remember if this is position mid, this could go top lane. Do you want to go with that? It looks like no, at least not right now. Rek'Sai locked in there, so another one of those powerful early junglers. I wouldn't completely hate it if they actually are considering the Soraka versus just a hover. It would be a pick that Set would have a really hard time punishing. It would mean you can kite uh, and basically force 100 Thieves to completely all in on you while trying to sustain it. Probably just a hover though, as they're now hovering Kale. Not just a hover, Kale locked in. Okay. I'm just taking a second to process. Yeah, it, it'll. It, it's one of those that you have to breathe in, breathe out a little bit. So we know the answer to our previous question of are they going to be picking for early game or late game? Yeah, they're going late. Uh, that's. This is actually flexible. They can put the kale top into the set. Once it's level six, it can actually farm pretty easily. And, and it's actually, uh, we talked about this a lot at Worlds when we were wondering if it was gonna be a meta pick there in the early days. If the other team can't accelerate the game, the first six levels are actually not that bad. Yeah. So uh, they have until 20 seconds to swap the Lucian and the Kale between mid and top. It, it's probably better if Lucian's mid, if I'm being completely honest, against the Zoe, because the Kale should be able to at least play defensively early on into the set. Yeah, play defensively till six. And like you said, once she has the ranged auto attack, a ranged auto attacker should never be in range for set to walk up and face break you yeah. into a minion or something. He doesn't have the tools to close the gap. The champion does not have the utility. Bruin can even CS from range with early points E, and if someday ever tries to go on him without flash, he can just Q him as he walks towards it. There's a chance yeah. Kale is an extremely good pick into set. I haven't seen the matchup. I'm just kind of curious. Right, I mean, we haven't seen most matchups for set in pro play yet, considering the champion is only just now available for pro play. Yeah. But we're gonna get to see the Kale versus set, see how the scaling works out there as we're ready to load into the rift here. Bottom lane, both AD carries packing a lot of punch. 
mid lane Ryoma on the Zoe. That's a lot of pick potential working together with your Jarvan, with your Rakan. 100 Thieves will have the tools in that kit to make sure they can find picks as the game progresses. Yeah, and it's going to be very crucial that they're able to get clean initiations onto Aphelios. That's the champion that I'm looking at. A lot of times you'll see Aphelios paired with Braum or Tom Kench because it is a champion that needs peel assistance. Unless Kale is with the team, there's nothing good to peel Aphelios. So Stixay is the most vulnerable player on COG this game. Crowd's ready, we're ready. Let's get into some League of Legends. Kicking off week two here, CLG and 100 Thieves, both looking for that first really convincing win here in LCS 2020. Out onto the Rift, taking a look here at Summoner Spells, Keystones, all that. You will see Fleet Footwork on the Kale on the top side, uh -huh. provides that much more kiting capability up against the set. Set also going to be running Conqueror this game. You see a few different keystones on him, Grasp of the Undying sometime. Yeah. But maximum damage on the Conqueror this time around. But while we're waiting for the minions to spawn, Avali is standing by with a sideline report with 100 Thieves coach. Thanks, guys. I've got Dix with me. And actually, we can take a look at this level one that's happening right now. Oh, Stix say got away. OK, so back to the interview. Take we take those. This is the first time that we are now seeing set in the pro play for the LCS. So what are your hopes for someday on this champion and how it's going to fit into this team comp? So I mean, someday has been a big 1v9er when he plays this champ, so I'm pretty confident in him. Uh, they have like a pretty low range comp that wants to like dive in. And that's like set's comfort zone. So I think we're feeling pretty good about this draft. Now, one thing that I wanted to ask you about was the Kale versus Set matchup in the top lane, just because we haven't seen, uh, you know, so much of competitive play. So how do you think this matchup is going to work? I mean, it seems like a scaling matchup. We've never really, like, practiced against this, so we wouldn't know it, like, super, super well. But, I mean, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed for someday up there. Zix, thank you, and best of luck. Back to you guys. I'm really curious to see the same thing. <laughs> As Six says, we'll have to see how this matchup goes. A lot of crazy stuff happening at level one, though. The invade happened. Stixay had to burn his flash, which means Wiggly wanted to try and steal the red, knowing his red is in danger. And someday actually sacks some early wave experience to help out Meteos in the jungle. That's a really, that's a move you're very grateful for as a jungler. Let's see if Meteos can make something happen with this basically free red buff. Crown, still level one, so doesn't have the dash to get away there from Meteos, but he stays back far enough that the Jarvan gank isn't going to be successful. Ryoma now with a level two advantage, knows that he's got the edge in these trades here. Sleepy Trouble Bubble, Paddle Star. Crown dashes forward, finds a little bit of damage in trade. Yeah, that's likely a decent trade for Lucian, although doesn't have that Corrupting Potion yet, can still sustain up pretty well with the Doran's Blade. Getting the flash and the heal out of Stixe, who's already a, a fairly low mobility champion early, is just so, so big for the Zyre Rakan. Uh, on top of being able to deny Wiggly red buff, it allows Zyre Rakan to just play so incredibly aggressive into the Leona Felios lane. Look, still zero CS on Stixe because they burned his summoners early and have been playing that lane aggressively. Ruin will just keep farming up nice and easy here in the top side someday. Hanging back, doesn't want to push his luck considering he did fall behind an EXP a bit. Means he's level two versus level three up against this Kale. Teleport count on both sides. It's both solo laners on CLG running them. Only one on the side 100 Thieves rocking the TP. So that's going to be a global disadvantage that we're going to have to keep track of as this game goes on in regards to how 100 Thieves want to position around the map. For sure. And Meteos has complete say over how 100 Thieves positions on the map right now because he did control red buffs. His bottom lane is pushed. And he had first recall as well as a sweeper that's ready to go. So no one on CLG is actually in a position to be able to make a play right now. Uh, and Medio needs to decide where to go. Mid lane, Ryoma's not going to get a trouble bubble onto Crown, but he'll just continue to maintain control over this wave. He's got the shove, he's got the priority. Crown will be left to deal with that while Ryoma does duck into the bottom side brush here. He'll go back, shop up. Doesn't even have to use all the charges of the Corrupting Potion. Just has a great back timer, so might as well take advantage of that. But now allowing Crown to go back means he's going to shove another wave up. Try to interrupt the back here if he can. Trouble Bubble at least forces him to walk. And there you go. I mean, just look at what Ryoma's is doing. It's because the early game was so beneficial to 100 Thieves. I mean, even just looking kind of across the map, like Wiggly hasn't crossed 
into River at all. Meteos is easily going to be able to get both Scuttle Crabs in this matchup, and Wiggly is kind of relegated to farming defensively in his jungle while his lanes kind of get punished early. If they're not down a thousand gold by time the first dragon goes down, it's probably an accomplishment based on what happened earlier. Yeah, and you can see there, Someday managed to get the Phase Breaker onto Ruin, hit him with four auto attacks in the meantime. Bottom side, 2v2 is going to be breaking out. But Smoothie's very tanky on the Leona between Aftershock yeah. and the flat damage reduction of the Eclipse. The champion is just so hard to burst down. Yeah, and what Six mentioned in the interview in terms of it being a composition that wants to dive in, I'm a little conflicted on that, on that comment, actually, because all of their damage dealers are ranged. The... The utility, the jungle support role, yes, they are melee, but they can still play to peel if they so choose. So I'm really curious to see uh, how COG will approach the rest of this game, knowing the early game didn't necessarily allow them to be aggressive. I mean, if, if Meteos doesn't get a successful gank off before the Aphelios, Leona, and Kale hit level 6, then... Then I'm really curious to see how team fights will go, depending on if COG tries to engage or just continue to play defensively. And also, I mean, you have the ability for Someday to use the ultimate on set to try to grab one of these targets and just slam them into the back line. Yeah. But because your top laner on the Kale isn't going to be one of those huge meatball super tanks, you've got a Leona, but these days Leona's rushing Gargoyle Stone Plate. Mm -hmm. So if you don't wait for her to hit that active before slamming her into the back line, you're not going to get a lot of damage from that game. Yeah. Crown as well, hitting level six and getting a lot of culling damage. Things are things are recovering uh, for the COG early game. You can see the Lucian being able to have positive trades into the Zoe. It's fairly easy for Crown to dodge most of the Zoe skill shots. Pretty surprised that Meteos didn't go for any type uh, of early play, especially when Ryoma was able to push Crown in early. Some type of four-man dive on the flashless heal of Stix A. But those five minutes of flash cooldown are gone, so at this point, the map is reset six and a half minutes in, as almost as if nothing had happened. Yeah, 100 Thieves had a few hundred gold in a lead there a few moments ago, but now that is pretty much tied up. CLG back to even standing there with them. Looking at the inventories of the junglers, you can see Meteos is going to be going for that Cinder Hulk build here on the Jarvan. Says the team has enough damage with the Zaya, with the Zoe. Wants to make sure he can be frontlining there, initiating and not immediately blowing up. And the call from 100 Thieves is, let's go for the drink. Yeah, it is the safe play to take in this situation. There's still basically no vision for COG. They are very clearly signaling that they're okay with this lane and they're not really going to do anything. And I'm going to be interested to track that as this game progresses because when I watched a lot of COG in week one, where statistically they were just the worst team in the league. Their goal at 15 was bad. They, I think, had 10 kills and 32 deaths overall. They really just lost fairly badly in both games, even if there were a few close team fights in the Dignitas game. But the biggest problem for them was communication and synergy. So we haven't seen that yet because they haven't tried to do anything together. They're <laughs> literally just laning, and that's working okay for them. But once the plays start, I want to see where the synergy is. See if a play gets made here in the bottom side. That brush is currently home to a couple of players, but won't be much longer. Wiggly will make his way back to the base. Going to go ahead, recall, shop up, grab a couple of control wards here on the wreck side. Considering people are nearing that level six point, you can see solo laners already up to level seven. Jungler's now starting to hit level six. Meteos has the Cataclysm available. Bot lanes will be hitting it soon. I'm looking to see those plays finally start. Both teams mm -hmm. have been happy to just say, okay, play the early game very slow. Let's not risk anything. Let's not yeah. go for any hyphy moves. But I want to start seeing those advantages being attempted here. I mean, it's interesting because if the junglers aren't going for plays, the Kale set lane doesn't create action on its own. Right. Ruin is playing that very defensively. Uh, the Zyre Rakan matchup versus the Leona is interesting because if the Rakan tries to go in, that's when Smoothie's more likely to be able to turn something. And since Smoothie was behind, he hasn't decided to go in either. So it's like two of the lanes that Hunter Thieves have have a bit of a difficulty playing aggressive early without jungle intervention. Right. And Meteos hasn't tried to do anything. So we're at a kind of a, a standstill because Meteos hasn't initiated any plays. Ruin continuing to just shove up here in the top side. You can see him building up a CS advantage for himself. 81 to 66. Has a couple extra minions alive here that someday will be able to farm up. Someday with a Mercury Treads rush, making sure that 
When you're in that melee versus ranged matchup, especially when you have incredibly limited mobility on your champion's kit, the boots go a long way in making sure you don't yeah. just constantly get kited to death. So he's got that bit of a movement speed advantage over his opponent for now, but still going to find himself hurt with those ranged auto attacks. Exactly. Now the Ruin's level 6 and he's gone lifesteal. I really don't know what Sunday's going to do in that matchup. It seems like Kale is a really good counter pick. Uh, but here's what I want to see next, actually. Uh, I want to see Hunter Thieves go for Rift Herald. They already controlled the first dragon. It's two and a half minutes before the cloud goes. That's when you take your bot lane, you rotate up. It's interesting because Cody Stunt isn't a teleport bot laner, uh, but I think the correct play actually would be to send both Cody and Stunt to Rift Herald and move Someday bottom lane. Because Someday's not going to be able to do anything into Kale anyway, so yeah. you may as well make them start swapping around. But instead, if they can get away with just sending Meteos there, it's fine. Uh, but even if we look on the minimap, actually, like, he's getting pushed off it because they didn't send their bot lane there. Yep. Meteos is forced to throw the flag over the wall, has to go after that one to get away, and the Rift Herald's just going to reset. CLG not willing to try to commit to that one, risk drawing 100 Thieves back in and have some sort of a fight break out. They don't want that. Instead, they'll just waste Meteos' time, and he's still got really nothing accomplished. He's 10 yeah. CS up above his opponent, but not making a whole lot happen here just yet. Stick stay there in the bottom side. Stunt going in, looking to make the play with the quickness, but a nice flash away from Stixa keeps him alive, and a TP comes down to the bottom lane from Crown. Yeah, that was a good flash from Stixa. The punish there by 100 Thieves, since Smoothie did disrupt the Rift Herald, was to try that, but just overall, CLG is happy with this holding pattern. Oh, CLG <laughs> is not happy about Ioma. that by Yoma! Meteos. The stopwatch might be able to do it. Oh, Meteos. Meteos! He goes too early. Dinner is served. First blood for Wiggly. Ryoma did 99.5% of the work. Oh. And during the stopwatch, Meteos just needed the flag. He didn't even need the drag. The flag was yeah. enough. <laughs> but he dragged his way into giving up first blood. So. That is so incredibly beneficial for COG. Crown could have gotten basically solo kill, did not. The Rift Herald could have gone over to 100 Thieves if they would have just sent their bottom lane like a lot of teams do when they're trying to cycle objectives. But now, the Crown not only didn't die, but they can keep the Kale versus set lane. It's even bigger. This is Ryoma. Let's watch this. He has Proto Belt, so he knows he can burst. Gets a good sleep, gets the Electrocute. Proto Belt gets the auto attacks, and there he's just trying to get the baby Sheen proc from his ultimate. Oh, no. It's so tragic. Oh, your question mark ping in that one if you're Ryoma. Oh, man. There's a lot of different ways that could have been a kill. But we don't need to go over Coulda, woulda, shoulda. What actually happened is the fact that it's first blood over to CLG. Wiggly's got that extra money now on his Rek'Sai. We'll see what kind of advantages they're able to build with that. CLG on the Rift Herald. It's stunt nearby, 100 Thieves. Contemplating stopping this, but it doesn't look like they have the manpower available. Instead, they will trade objectives. The Rift yep. Herald over to CLG. The second Drake over to 100 Thieves. Mountain will be the element that takes over Summoner's Rift this time. Extra terrain being added, which is honestly really nice for Zoe. Gives you some extra terrain to fire those bubbles through in the jungle. Very true. It gives you a lot more travel time if Ryoma is going to be looking for picks. Uh, and 100 Thieves at this point is really trying to make a play. They know the Rift is going to be dropped somewhere, so they're going to try and at least start to match here. Ruin, though, with the map pressure and Meteo show in bottom lane, this is just Rift top lane. They're going to get... They're going to try and kill the plate before dropping Rift, or maybe just kill Sunday. Looks like the dive could be the choice here. Ulti coming out from the Kale onto Wiggly. He wants to dive through, find the execution oh! onto Sunday. Oh! But this is how Seth oh! outplay. You do not respect the Haymaker. You get smacked. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Big play by Someday. CLG could have just dropped the Rift Herald and gotten four plates. That was a possibility. Instead, they are unable to burst before the Haymaker comes out. That's exactly Set's wheelhouse, as you mentioned. It's people running into him and trying yep. to dive it. He's not good at creating his own plays. Big turnaround there by 100 Thieves. Not only does Someday get the double kill, it repels the push top lane and they get first turret. We're gonna watch this one more time. He'd use the Haymaker, so they think, hey, it's down, time to dive, but he's maxing it. So it's only an eight second cooldown. It comes back up as Wiggly is in the air. And then since Ruin had already used his ultimate for the preemptive dive, he goes down as well. 20% cooldown already on Someday because of the Black Cleaver means it's also reduced to 6.4. Yep. It's up deceptively soon. 
and you must respect it playing against this champion. That's the ability that every set outplay revolves around. CLG don't quite time it correctly, and now both the plays coming out from these teams have been mistakes from the other side. The idea was right. Yeah. They could have executed that dive better and likely gotten uh, a one for O or a one for one and then dropped Rift and taken the turret for free, but the execution's wrong. And then Medios as well. Ryoma made a story. good play, but yeah. was unable to capitalize. Now they're going for someday again. He does still have W and ultimate. All right, he's going to bring Wiggly back one more time. He'll get himself away. This is the problem. A lot of times people want to position the behind their opponents yeah. because that's the best way to block up their escape route. But with Set, it lets him just grab you and say, all right, we're going this way, buddy. Yeah, it takes him right back into the turret. It makes Wiggly ineffective. But they are still getting a large amount of gold into Ruin, and that ultimately will be uh, more of the late game. Turret plates are 5-2. to two. That could have been a lot better with this Rift. But now, second charge is going to be the majority of this turret. Uh, could be a little greedy, but they decide not to go for more. They've got Smoothie on the side. In case the Thieves try to collapse, CLG will have three bodies to resist that one with. However, backing away means they're not interested any longer here in the mid lane. Six is just going to be shoving up there with the Infernum. Aphelios now with Essence Reaver completed in inventory. He's got the first item fully done there. You can see that Cody Sun stopped off to fully complete his Berserker Greaves. Also go for an extra Dorian's Blade, so he doesn't quite have the same first item power spike here just yet. But that'll be coming online real soon. And I'm really interested to see the team fight that will likely happen in a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah. Kind of going through in my head how each team should try and play it. Because on one hand, uh, COG says, hey, we need to get a, we need to get on a Cody or a Ryoma. Yeah. Cody has cleanse, uh, and he's likely going to be positioned somewhere in the back line. If you get too close, somebody's just going to take you even further back, and you're going to die. Right? So it's, it's difficult for COG to engage safely. Uh, and, and then on the other side, for 100 Thieves, their, their initiation with Meteos being a little bit far behind, trying to engage into a Kale and a Kiting Lucian is a little bit dangerous. But when I try and kind of put everything together, it would be Stunt and Meteos going for Stixay. That's kind of how their fight should play out the most. But that does make it, again, more difficult for Set. So we'll see how, how Set ends up playing as we get this Drake now in 45 seconds. And we're also at the point where there's been a conversation. Me and Kobe had a slide about it on this or that this week with what's better, going for plates or going for drakes. And when you're yeah. the team that gets the two early drakes, your opponents are now in the spot where you start thinking, okay, we can't just let all these slide anymore. Mm -hmm. CLG's in that spot. Thieves, if they lose one, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. But if you lose this next one as CLG, that means your opponents are on that sole point, and you've got to be so respectful from that point on. Yeah, and CLG should be okay just poking Meteos or Someday from range without hard engaging. That's kind of the way they try and win. So Crown is staying in mid lane to try and get mid priority, and CLG doesn't want to cede control of this river just yet, because then they'd have inside track on the Drake. Watching what 100 Thieves is doing, though, is they want to threaten the turret to make CLG come towards them. Six A currently with the Crescendum and the Gravitum means he's got some CC potential. He's got some powerful burst with the turrets as well. We'll see how they're able to play around those guns here in the upcoming fight. Ryoma with a chilling smite also locked in. Smoothie able to find some CC onto Ryoma, but now the fight's going to be breaking out. Someday looking to tank a lot. He's bursted down before the Haymaker comes through. It's a one for one so far, but the Thieves are on their back foot. A nice bit of burst coming down onto Smoothie. Wiggly is the one who died on CLG, though, and without your jungler, the objective becomes less appealing. There's a chance they just reset this since Smoothie is pretty low and Ryoma's going to be able to continue to poke. So this dragon fight isn't necessarily over yet. Smoothie trying to get the waves going, but Meteos knows, hey, I'm the only jungler alive. Let's make something happen. Ruin farming up bottom. He's going to walk right into this brush. Meteos is going to find him there. He still has all. Dragon drag for the knockup. Ruin looking to outplay this one. Not able still has to, ult. does for not it. ult himself. <laughs> Any second and, now. And all right, we'll put that one in the same box as Double Lift Splash. Uh, to be fair, I think he was dead either way since his team wasn't able to completely follow through River and you can't auto attack in the one and a half second cast time of your ultimate. So I may have set the expectations a little early, but that was uh, just a smidgen off for COG, which is, I think, uh, the polite way of putting their season so far, where they had a lot of things going their way when they had Meteos' flashdown and they have a Gunblade Kale who can help sustain. They could have gained mid priority while waiting for Wiggly to spawn and then moved down to Drake if Meteos tried to solo it. But instead they split up 
Ruin ends up getting killed, and the third Drake of the game goes over 100 meters. Three Drakes means if five minutes from now they get that last one, it's Mountain Soul, which is that persistent shield that regenerates out of combat, will make their champions that much harder to burst. And it means a solid initiation from Smoothie is not going to mean as much if you can't get through that extra bit of health that's going to be surrounding the 100 Thieves member. CLG will have to pay so much attention to that as we move forward. Stopwatch counts. The front line, the initiators of CLG, the Rek'Sai and the Ilona, both have the stopwatch. They can go in, drop the aggro. If you look over at 100 Thieves, it's Cody's son who's got one on this Zaya. Makes him that much harder to dive, makes it that much more difficult for CLG to get rid of one of those super valuable targets that you mentioned in the Zoe and the Zaya together. That's really all the damage here on this team, unless you stand in a hangar. Yeah, and CLG will need to continue to try and scale up. Uh, while defending this Baron. There's a lot of gold in inventory right now, actually, for both Crown and Stixit. So they want to try and get those recalls off without losing mid-turret. Uh, once mid-turret goes down, they're going to end up losing a lot more. But Ruin scaling up more and more towards level 16. If he hits that point, COG still has a good chance of winning. They just would like to prevent the Dragon Soul from happening before then. CLG looking for that mid priority here now, shoving the wave up. Tier 1 turret still at half HP on the side of 100 Thieves. They'll continue defending that one pretty easily. It's a 2 to 1 turret lead for the Thieves. That's pretty much where their gold lead is coming from right now. Only 1,000 separates the two squads here 21 minutes into the game. 100 Thieves still have that top side river priority. They'll clear out some wards in their opponent's jungle, making it that much scarier for CLG to check into that area of the map. CLG's mid lane turret also still standing, so yep. both sides looking to whittle these down and just get the extra map control that provides. Yeah, and it looks like everyone got their recalls in before defending the turret. It's always kind of interesting, but hard to pay attention to the timing of recalls. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times, like, the synchronized recall can be an amazing offensive weapon because everyone resets at the same time and they go and reattack the map. When you're on the defensive, asynchronous recalls are better. Because if they would have recalled everyone at once, they would have lost the turret. Yeah. But by desyncing them, they've kept the turret at 75% health, and now everyone has their items. Especially when you've got a champion like Aphelios with the Inferno, it's super easy to just have one guy clear out the whole thing, as long as your opponents don't have Baron. And one interesting point about Baron that I think I saw in a discussion last week was the removal of the old Mountain Drake, the one that added the true damage mm -hmm. to objectives, removed a lot of those 21, 22, 23 minute Baron play yeah. that we saw in season nine, because you just don't have the damage to safely do it. Anymore. And something that exacerbated that was all the Senna we saw yeah. in AD Carrier without attack speed trying to do Baron when you got like a LeBlanc on your team as well. It just, it wasn't working. And it's, it's still slow, even though Zaya is a fairly fast Baron killer, but like this team comp I'd say would be a medium Baron team for 100 Thieves. Uh, by no means are you panicking if the other team is in fog for five seconds. It increases the importance on getting a Dragon Soul or being able to play the game without Baron and you know go side to side for picks. So for now, COG is just trying to make sure they're not face checking anywhere because that's the only thing that'll really give over Baron is if they over engage and lose a team fight. Someday wandering through his jungle here. CLG has some vision on him. They got three guys nearby, but again, this is not the dude you want to pile in on, yeah. especially with allies nearby. Almost impossible to burst him when he's building health, when he's got the Haymaker shield. It's so much. Did we announce that it is Saturday? Was that part of the pregame show? Or was that just a... Pre I just want to do a set check-in. He's... Like, it's the first game. I want to give, like, a letter grade Freak for the is pick on so far. the desk. We can't do the puns here. Okay, it is Saturday, the first day of set. I accept that so okay. much more willingly. Okay, uh, I think it's been pretty underwhelming in this game. Yeah. Uh, I really do like the pick that Ruin has into it. The laning phase was completely unpunished. The, the only reason somebody's in the game, actually, is because they tried a two-man dive. They easily could have killed this turret without giving him two kills if they played more defensively. And then we'd be talking about how far behind set is uh, as Kale scales up. So we'll see what happens throughout as Ooh. they're trying to make the fight happen mid. Ryoma flashing away. It is his real flash. Smoothie going to be kept alive in the middle by the Kale ultimate. 100 Thieves looking to turn this oh. one around. Nice engage there by Stunt. CC locking up CLG. They're on the retreat now. Culling's going to take Stunt very low. 100 Thieves not finding any kills here just yet, but a nice drowsy there. On the CLG lines, Crown getting himself out just barely with the flash. Oh man, that was such a well played fight by 100 Thieves, repelling the initiation from CLG basically effortlessly. Cody Sun didn't have to use all or cleanse, and now 100's very easily gonna get this Drake, you would think. 
Drake's soul at 24 minutes is a huge power spike here for 100 Thieves. It also means Elder's gonna be on the table very early in this game if they get it. CLG, they have to realize what's going on, but at the same time, they know that there's nothing they can do to stop it. Wiggly's not in any shape to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Dragon's soul for 100 Thieves. Well played by them. Week one, 100 Thieves, one dragon. Week two, four times as many dragons. In one game. Improvement, that's the <laughs> up and to the right type of improvement you like to see. They had an early focus on the objective control. That's where Meteos was spending most of his early time. And 25 minutes in, you see the payoff. Mountain Soul completed, Baron's